Hi everyone, this is Jeff Stewart from Lizard Tech. Today I wanted to uh, talk about and demonstrate how to set up and run a mosaic job in GeoExpress. Um, it's very simple and easy to do. Um, uh, as you know, GeoExpress has a lot of very simple and easy tools, um, aside from just compression, mosaic being one of them. Um, but GeoExpress can also reproject and crop and color balance images. But again, today we're going to talk about mosaicing. Um, there are a couple different ways you can start a mosaic job in GeoExpress. Uh, probably the most popular way is this create new mosaic icon, this create new mosaic button. Um, if you select the create new mosaic button, you get a dialog box here. Um, it asks you to select what type of mosaic you want to create. Um, and gives you some options here. So you have an option for where you want to save the output file, um, the format for the output file, um, whether or not you want to uh, mosaic images of differing resolutions uh, and differing projection systems, um, and what kind of Mr. Sid mosaic option you would want if you're creating a Mr. Sid. So um, to go into a little bit more detail, uh, the enable multi-resolution mosaicing. So if you have uh, images that might be one, I don't know, one meter or fifty centimeters or one foot, three foot, it'll basically um, m uh, mosaic all of those together. Um, if you have multiple proje multiple projection systems, uh, what you will do is uh, what it will do is when you mosaic it, it will reproject everything into WGS eighty four. So um, if that's if you're okay with that, um, that's fine. Otherwise, you you probably want to reproject everything into a common um, uh, projection system prior to mosaicing the data. Um, down here, when it comes to flat mosaics and composite mosaics, a flat mosaic is what you probably traditionally understand as as, as a mosaic as being. So it takes all the data, it stitches it all together, and create one new file out of it. A composite mosaic uh, is a little bit different. Um, it's only available for, for, for Mr. Sid images. Um, what it does is it creates a wrapper around a grouping of Mr. Sid images, which in effect mosaics them all together, uh, but it takes a lot less time and a lot less processing power uh, to create that mosaic. Um, it's If you don't have a lot of time, if you deal with mostly Mr. Sid's, um, it's a great way to, uh, to create mosaics of images that perform really well but uh, don't take a lot a lot of time to actually process and create. Um, so that's those are the raster uh, mosaic options. LiDAR is a little bit different. Um, obviously when you select this you can still uh, identify where you want the output file but there's a lot a lot fewer um, a lot fewer options when it comes to LiDAR. Um, you can only uh, stitch together and mosaic LiDAR in the Mr. Sid Generation 4 uh, file format, for example. But uh, I'll demonstrate both raster and LiDAR, and uh, it'll give you an idea as to um, how things work. So, so go back to raster here. Um, I am going to submit, let's see, I'm going to do uh, demo raster mosaic as my output file. I'm just going to keep it in my documents, that's fine. Um, I'm going to press OK. Oh, um, I'm dealing, everything I have is in the same resolution. Everything I have is in the same projection system. Um, I'm going to be selecting and mosaicing TIFFs, so I want to make sure I keep flat mosaic selected. Okay, now once that's done, it pops open a dialog box. Now this is the last folder uh, I was working in. Um, It'll basically open up whatever last folder you were working in with GeoExpress. Um, I here have a listing of a bunch of TIFF files and their world files that are associated. I'm going to grab them. I'm just going to select them all here. Select Open. Okay, there we go. So you can see I now have all the image listing here in my in my job listing, and I've got a preview image right there so that looks pretty good everything's stitched together if I go over to properties you can see I've selected Mr. Sid Generation 4 as my output for the mosaic 
Um, it's all defaulted to lossless compression. I want to change that. I'm going to do 20 to 1 on this time. When, when I change the compression ratio, notice how the output file size lessens. So here's the original out, uh, image size. So if I took all these TIFFs, mosaic them together, and it was a TIFF, it'd be 686.6 .6 megabytes. Uh, because I'm compressing it at 20 to 1 and creating Mr. Sid out of it, the output file size is going to be 34.3. So you see all this other uh, image information, TIFFs, the, the bands, the data type, the projections, etc. So once you have that done, once you basically bring in your tiles, you um, specify your compression ratio, you could conceivably do other things. Like I could choose to reproject. Let's say maybe I want to reproject it to WGS84. I just hit you know, reproject image and I select a new coordinate reference system for the output image. Or if I wanted to crop, I could also choose to combine operations and uh, crop data as well as mosaic it together. For, and uh, you could do it by rectangle, like extends or by shape file. If I had a multi-poly shape file, I could go in there and load it up and select the parts of the polygon I want to have extracted and and, uh, and crop them out. You can also choose to despeckle if I would like or alter edit, edit metadata. One of the nice things about GeoExpress is that you know you can combine a bunch of different tasks into one job and uh, in that way it makes for a much more efficient um, image processing uh, uh, image processing process. So I've selected that. Um, to run the mosaic, all you do is hit Run Selected Jobs. Now that that's done, it pops me over to Output. So it's, you're going to see here, it's going to start uh, mosaicing this data together and compressing it into Mr. Sin. So it takes, what, one minute, 51 seconds. So um, it, depending, obviously, on the size, of, uh, of the mosaic, the size of the data that you're trying to mosaic and compress, um, it could take longer. It could take, you know, if you're doing a, a whole countywide mosaic, for example, it could take hours. If you're doing just a few images, it'll take seconds. Um, it's just one of those things. Um, you can see over here, one thing that's interesting to note, I'm going to jump back to properties, is that um, estimated memory usage. So this is this is nice because this will tell you how much of actual RAM um, they think it will take, or the uh, the application estimates that it will take um, to run this process. That's that's actually a really pretty small amount. So back over here, it's almost done. In the meantime, I am going to look for some lidar files here to also. Uh, uh, mosaic together as an example. So let's see here. I'm going to create a new mosaic. I'm going to hit LIDAR. I'm going to do demo LIDAR mosaic. Okay. So it's going to begin a new job. It's going to dump me up. Uh, gonna, it's going to open up. Um, again, this is the last folder. I was working with, but I don't have any LiDAR files in there, so I'm going to have to search for something else. I have some demo uh, demo data over here. Let's see here. Demo LiDAR. Let's see here. This looks... I'll tell you what. I'm going to go up to this one. Nope. Okay, so here we go. We have a bunch of LiDAR files here. I've already mosaic this uh, once before, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to do it again. I have a bunch of LiDAR files. Um, these are actually binary point, point files. So this is Geiger mode LiDAR. Um, BPF format is something that we recently uh, introduced uh, for GeoExpress 953, and we're pretty excited about it. it. So let's see. I've added those tiles. Now go over to Properties. So you can see um, here we got uh, Mosaic Properties. It's already in WGS84, but it's in uh, UTM Zone 18. Um, the file type, it's BPF. How many points there? So it's over 3 million points. There's a lot of data in this uh, Geiger Mode LiDAR. 
Um, again, you know, your image size, nominal size, the original file size. I'm going to compress it at 2 to 1. Um, and you could do 5 to 1, you could do lossless. Um, it's really up to you. I, I tend to like to uh, do 2 to 1. It should get me uh, some pretty good um, compression results. Now, I've done that. I'm going to come over here and uh, I'll always like to preview my image before I work with it. GeoExpress um, actually, or 953, um, has some new viewer options for LiDAR that we're pretty pretty excited about. Um, you can use custom gradient ranges, you can exaggerate your, your height using the Z exaggeration, number of points, so by default it's uh, 500,000. If you recall, this data supported over 3 million. So I'm actually going to increase that and then once I do that it's going to redraw it. See it's redrawing a little bit slower now because it's adding more of those pe that pixel data in. But I'm really curious as to, uh, yeah, there we go, as to the performance. So you can specify an alpha channel which I think is pretty useful. Um, so alpha, specifying an alpha channel can sometimes make it uh, a little bit easier to uh, view the data. But you see as I change the alpha channel and, and uh, select different ones, you can see how the, the actual preview image um, changes. In any case, uh, when I work with this uh, this viewing options, it's not doing anything to alter the, un the underlying data. I just want to make sure that's uh, that's understood. It purely is how it's uh, just changes how it's being viewed here in the uh, in the application. So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select none. Back to go back to the original. Select OK. So I'm going to redraw it all, but I'm not all that worried about it. So once I have um, all of my you know mosaic properties. Uh, compression ratio, file destination set, output format set. Oh, I should know. I should say, Mr. Sid Generation 4 um, is our compression. It will also compress it to an LAZ, um, which is the sort of an open source compression for. Um, it's an, it is an open source compression for LiDAR. But uh, I'm going to keep it as Mr. Sid Generation 4. Okay, so now that I have um, set all that, I'm going to go ahead and hit Run Selected Jobs. So this is uh, obviously this data set is a lot smaller um, than the image than the uh, raster data set, so it's uh, turning through it pretty quick here. There we go. So you can see here for this particular job. Um, what the target compression ratio was, what I actually got, which was even better than that, and uh, how I took 14 seconds to get it all done. So, pretty rapid. If we go back to our demo raster mosaic, this also uh, succeeded. It took two and a half, uh, two and a half minutes, and got pretty spot on with the compression ratio. So pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is open up these two mosaics. I'm going to do that by I'm just going to bring this data back in to uh, to GeoExpress. First, I'm going to bring in the raster mosaic. You can see, boom, here it is. It's one file. As a Mr. Sid. Now at this point, I could do all sorts of other things to it again. I could reproject. I could crop. Like whatever. Um, and I'm gonna go and open up that lidar mosaic too. What's nice about this lidar mosaic? You see, now that's a Mr. Sid format. You see how quickly that that drew. It's one of the reasons I really like uh, Mr. Sid format for lidar is that um, when used in um, obviously GeoExpress or other LizardTech products or even on ArcGIS, the, the rendering of LiDAR and Mr. Sid 
uh, or in GeoExpress or Express Server, whatever, the rendering of LiDAR in Mr. Sid format is really, really rapid, which is, uh, I, uh, which I like because we don't have lots of lots of time to waste around here. Anyway, so I hope that um, that is uh, been useful to everybody. Um, I should say at this point that there, I guess there is one more way to uh, to create or initiate a mosaic job in in GeoExpress, and that is simply to drag and drop tiles into the selected jobs or the uh, jobs listing here. So for example, if I go back to these Niagara tiles, if I just selected all of these, highlighted them, drug them over, um, here, let me try that again. If I selected all of those tiles and drug them over, it would automatically detect that there are multiple tiles I'm bringing into the jobs listing and would ask me whether or not I want a mosaic uh, for those tiles uh, or for or whether or not I want separate output for each input. So do I basically want to create a mosaic from it or just compress each tile individually? After that, um, it's basically the same process to, uh, to create the mosaic. Um, in this, this dialog, you can drag and drop uh, both raster and LiDAR data into the uh, jobs listing, and it will bring up the same dialog box. So, um, depends. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I like to use this function. Sometimes I like to just drag and drop images in. It, it, uh, it really depends on, uh, on where I am at the moment and if I want to... Uh, uh, for example, if I use, if I drag and drop them in, if I, let's say I'm working in a, uh, like in a uh, file folder doing some other things, or maybe I see some, or maybe I just downloaded a bunch of data and I went to my data downloads and I saw all the tiles and I just, you know, drag and drop it. So like seeing as I'm already in Windows Explorer, I can drag and drop them in. And it, you know, it's really personal preference. Um, One other thing is as well before I end this session, um, you can access uh, the properties in the job options um, for the mosaic either through the properties and output section of the properties tab, or if you right click that mosaic, you can also um, access those options. Um, you can also uh, select to, for example, export the job settings. Let's say the settings that uh, you keep for this job, you also want for the next group of tiles, uh, you want a mosaic. So you could do that. Um, you could, if you select tile options, it opens up tile manager. And from here, you can delete tiles, remove all tiles. You could um, and add additional tiles to, to this listing. It's just another way to sort of uh, get your tiles into the system that you want a mosaic. Anyway, well, I hope this has been useful and uh, informative. Thank you uh, very much to everyone who's uh, who watches this. If you have any questions um, regarding this process or what I've demonstrated, please feel free to contact support at lizardtech.com. Um, I hope you all have uh, fantastic days, and I look forward to speaking with you next time. Thank you very much.